I think we'll get started. So welcome to today's panel discussion on syntactic forms, research and applications, an update from Asia Pacific. We want to acknowledge the US aid funding to make these events possible. The syntactic and composite forms conference was scheduled for 2020, but could not take place due to the pandemic. And many other conferences have been canceled within the past year. So we decided to create a series of virtual events to catch up with the leaders in syntactic form area. The second panel, the first panel discussion took place on December 4th and the recording is available on YouTube. The link is given here and I will also put it in the chat box. Uh, we decided to break down the events based on the geographical location uh, because of difficulties with the time zones. Uh, we hope the information that emerges from these panels can guide some of the future research efforts in syntactic form area to make uh, research relevant to the needs of industry. Uh, please uh, make sure to register for the next panel. It's also a free event and we'll get, a, get an update from Europe for that. So today we are fortunate to have three eminent panelists with us. They need no introduction in the syntactic form community. So I'll keep their introduction brief from my side. Uh, Dr. Matyunje Dodamani is an assistant professor of mechanical engineering at the National Institute of Technology, Suratal, India. His research is focused on syntactic forms synthesized by industrial scale manufacturing methods and 3D printing. Dr. Jay's research has been supported by the Department of Science and Technology, Science and Engineering Research Board, and Ministry of Education, among many other agencies. He is an author of more than 65 journal papers and book chapters inventor of two Indian patents, and he is serving on the editorial board of Materials Circular Economy Journal. Dr. Thomas Fiedler completed his master's in mechanical engineering at the Frederick Alexander University in Germany in 2004, and then obtained PhD in cellular metals at the University of Aveiro in Portugal in 2007. Dr. Fiedler has been working on the advancement of metallic forms at the University of Newcastle in Australia. His key interests are the low cost production and characterization of metallic forms to improve their economic competitiveness. His recent work includes the manufacturing of functionally graded metallic syntactic forms for energy absorption. Our third panelist, Dr. Gaurav Kumar Gupta is the principal scientist in the lightweight metallics material division at CSIR AMPRI lab in Bhopal, India. He received his PhD in material science and engineering at IIT Kanpur. He has 14 years experience in research and development in the area of aluminum metal matrix composites, uh, micro and nano composites by casting powder metallurgy. Uh, and he's interested in tribology and armor applications of these materials. He has published more than 40 papers in international journals. So we welcome all the panelists and sincerely thank them for taking this time and joining us today. So attendees can ask questions using the question and answer utility of the webinar. Now we will take some questions as we go. And now I request each panelist to take about five minutes to give an overview of their work related to syntactic forms. And once they give their introduction, then we'll go into the question and answer phase. Uh, Thomas, would you like to start? No problem at all. Let me just share my screen. Thank you. Um, here we go. Okay, so thank you for this very kind introduction. Um, so I'm going to first talk a bit about Newcastle. As mentioned before, I'm from the University of Newcastle. Newcastle is a small city. It's the seventh biggest city in Australia and located about 150 kilometers north of Sydney. Now, I'm obviously highly biased in there, but I would say it's a very beautiful city. Um, we are lucky enough to be directly next to the ocean. We have great waves if you're into surfing, and we also have a really pleasant climate for most of the year. Now, the University of Newcastle was established in 1965, and at the moment we have just under 40,000 enrolled students. Um, our main campus, which you can see here on the right hand side, is in a very beautiful bushland setting. Um, it's also pretty safe. It has been over two years that I have found the last snake on my way to lunch. But our main campus is now also moving more and more into the city where we have a modern inner city campus. Now I've established a cellular metals research group about eight years ago. We are a relatively small team. Um, we are currently one academic, that's myself. 
a, a postdoc student if I can afford it and about three PhD students. But I believe we have been able to punch well above our weight, which is also because we have an excellent lab and workshop team to support us. Now, just briefly about our research, our origin is really looking more into the numerical analysis of existing forms. Here we were looking into predicting properties, doing parametric analysis and getting a better understanding about what is actually happening inside these materials. About five years ago, we have now expanded our scope. The idea was to take our learnings based on the numerical analysis on board and use that to improve new, better materials. Now, one thing that we learned quite quickly is that a better material doesn't really mean a material with better properties, but very often it's actually a material that can simply be produced at a lower cost. Now, my real passion is to be able to take these materials out of the lab and bring them into the real world, into industrial applications. In 2008, we have been quite lucky to work with Transurban, that's one of the world's leading road toll operators. And we have been able to look at the integration of syntactic forms into advanced roadside barriers. So what you can see on the slide is one of my favorite tests. Um, we have been dropping a two and a half ton concrete weight onto one of our samples from a height of five meters with the intent of simulating an automotive impact. In parallel, we are also working more and more on functional properties of materials, of metallic foams. So for example, compact heat exchangers, catalyst supports, or even as using it as an implant for tissue regeneration. In general, we are really interested in identifying new industry problems that may be solved using metallic foams, and we are very open for any kind of collaboration to do so. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jay. Would you like to go next? Yes. Uh, Professor, I hope the screen is visible. Yes, we can see. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, 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 thank you, Professor Gupta, for inviting me on this panel. Uh, so I'm from uh, National Institute of Technology, Karnataka Suratkal, from Department of Mechanical Engineering. Uh, and I have a small team uh, and set up lab there at uh, campus known as Advanced Manufacturing Laboratory. Uh, so uh, we are down south there and we have again, we are again blessed with a beach on campus uh, uh, here and we are blessed with that natural beauty. So uh, our uh, uh, team's focus is on thermoplastic foams uh, fundamentally. And uh, here uh, in last seven, eight years, we uh, synthesized uh, thermoplastic foams from different manufacturing rules, starting with injection molding to recently to 3D printing. Uh, so we have developed some industrial scale components using injection molding and uh, synthesize them uh, typically uh, to the level of this small electrical junction box to the structural elements like uh, bottom caps for chair leg applications. And uh, we uh, found out that uh, we can uh, make the foams eco-friendly by having fly ash there in thermoplastics using industrial scale manufacturing. Recently, uh, from last three to four years, the focus has been shifted to 3D printing, and we have in-house a 3D printer and the filament extrusion line. So we manufacture the filaments in the lab of different compositions and different uh, foam elements, and we print them. We have this uh, 500 cubic millimeter 3D printer, wherein temperature can go up to 450 degrees C and we can try out different materials. So the primary focus here is uh, for material development and material innovations uh, that can be 3D printed. We have developed many filaments uh, to just mention a few. We have HDP filament, high density polyethylene, reinforced with fly ash, then elastomers, and then glass micro balloon reinforced ones, which are most commonly used in the industrial practices. Uh, no doubt, whenever we go for different materials, 
other than which is what the uh, market driven machines mentions to us we have a lot of issues to resolve and that's where our role comes in uh, this is a typical war page you can see it here so we need to optimize many parameters there when we go for uh, different polymer systems and then uh, as of now we have synthesized many forms and compared on a one scale of uh, uh, properties through polymer injection molding compression molding and 3d printing recently we ventured into 3d printing of sandwich uh, sandwiches with uh, syntactic foam core and this uh, printing is done in one go uh, and it is in situ done where and we uh, established uh, seamless bonding between the skin and the core which is uh, generally not available in conventional manufacturing methodologies wherein we manufacture core and skin separately and then bond them together we also printed some curved sandwich panels as well uh, as part of this 3d printing again we keep on exploring different systems different materials we printed flexible thermoplastic urethane as well as part of hobby projects printed some hearts with tpu and we have uh, printed a foam uh, which uh, has around 25% weight saving for specific applications and our research outcome has been uh, regularly being uh, taken up by the print media uh, these are some of the press releases in 17 by leading newspapers in india 18 and then uh, we have offered it recently with professor nikhil gupta uh, uh, we Uh, recently received national science foundation grant wherein we are going to host us students in lab at nitk for 3d printing activities thank you thank you very much uh, gorov would you like to go next uh, you can unmute yourself thank you sir for inviting me for this panel discussion so my institute ampri bhopal is a, is a one of the laboratory on material synthesis and it is a uh, comes under the council of scientific and industrial research and uh, we are uh, this is located in bhopal central part of india and my in my uh, institute there are many division which is working on uh, different aspect like we have a polymer division we have a Uh, radiation shielding uh, department and we have a geopolymeric division and one of the division which is uh, which i am working on is lightweight metallic metal division so from the initial uh, days uh, this division was working on mainly uh, na uh, metallic nano metallic composites and from last uh, 10 to 15 years we have switched to metallic foam for various application starting with the uh, aluminum foam uh, and uh, also aluminum syntactic foam so we have started with alum for normal form with the liquid metallurgy route and also alum syntactic form and later on we have also started the work on other metal form like titanium stainless steel and copper form by powder metallurgy route and recently we have also started making hollow spheres uh, using a, a fluidized bed reactor for making stainless steel titanium and aluminum and we are also making this uh, composite out of this uh, metal hollow sphere by infiltration route so uh, my, doc, my head dr dp mandal uh, is uh, not able to join because of personal issues so i am uh, uh, presenting on his behalf so the application which are uh, basically on the foam uh, are for the buoyancy application emi shielding stealth technology energy absorption and bio implant so some of the application that we are using for alum foam is for the energy apl application in the car uh, uh, crash box we are already doing some kind of simulation and we have tested our uh, foam for the ari testing for the uh, crash box test so we have successfully tested that our uh, metal foam aluminum metal foam can sustain uh, uh, the car crash with the 60 km per hour and car, uh, car weight is 1000 kg we already tested this thing we have already uh, 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 checked that with the simulation as well as experimental that both are working we are uh, in our lab we are using fly ash as a lot for the 
cement industries for the cement application from these fly ash we are extracting cenosphere from the uh, fly ash uh, bottom ash and we are using this cenosphere for many applications even for the coatings we are using even for the holosphere even for the syntactic form we are using so we are using mostly up to 500 micron cenosphere we are using and we are putting up to 50% uh, cenosphere in the mat liquid metal by we are doing stirring by making this uh, syntactic form stirring method we are also adding this cenosphere into the our uh foam with the using with the powder metallurgy root and uh, we have used this cenosphere foam in titanium alloys also for making bio implants and uh, of course we have a, from last two years we have a, a holosphere uh, making machine and we are optimizing it uh, and uh, the, the the alloy system which we are using for the making all kind of syntactic foam uh, through liquid metallurgy and powder metallurgy this is basically lm13 5083 2024 and in the case of titanium and stainless steel we are using pure titanium uh, grade 5 alloy titanium cobalt moly cobalt titanium alum, alum cobalt this currently we are using simple foam and using powder metallurgy now we have also added a cenosphere into that and also we have started working on magnesium foam also with az am series and some bio de magnesium alloy and the reinforcement which we would like to use currently we are using cenosphere and alumina but soon we will use uh, make Uh, all the holosphere like stainless steel, titanium alloy, nitin, even nitinol and aluminum, aluminite holosphere. We will add uh, these holosphere into the alum system as well as in other system. Our uh, intention to make the micro aluminum holosphere in the very low cost, uh, and we are also making foam sandwich panel uh, for these foams, and we are using polymer or face sheet, uh, metal face sheet in that. And our application mostly in defense, naval, and health sectors. And of course. Uh, Uh, our op uh, objective is to uh, classify the cenosphere and uh, we have to optimize the cenosphere size for optimum property and uh, whatever the ceramic and metallic holosphere we are making the is the mm size we are filing the patent and uh, we are already doing the simulation and uh, uh, real testing of this foam for blast and ballistic resistance panel currently we is, recently we have purchased a hopkinson bar for tensile as well compression for testing of this and we also purchase uh, air gas air gun for uh, testing of this blast uh, testing for this foam for up to 900 meter per second and uh, we are also adding these uh, cenosphere in the carbon foam also to make it more emi shielding and uh, increasing in thermal conductivity and we is uh, targeting this kind of carbon foam for uh, zinc uh, uh, zinc ban and uh, lead battery lead bat lead acid battery and for also for the steel technologies And, um, and now in coming years we are we are have to more focus on to blast resistance panel and ballistic panels and also hybrid alum foam where the it is a normal foam as well as a both cenosphere are also adding for increasing the uh, efficiency we are also adding nano tubes and uh, graphene into the this uh, alum foam to to finer uh, to make it finer uh, the pore size as well as to increase the plateau strength uh, in the future we will also like to coat this uh, cenosphere based uh, Uh, foam on the uh, part cenosphere on the steel plate for making is spray coating to make it more uh, increase the emi and uh, of course we have to make this micro balloon very cheaper and and making more large scale product currently we have using uh, the foam we are synthesizing by liquid metallurgy up to 30 to 60 kg we can produce in the in a one time and uh, uh, of course we can make uh, one one uh, 500 mm by 500 mm Foam panel from this our uh, whatever facility we have, and from the uh, fluidized bed method, which are may we are making hollow sphere, we can make uh, it is a volume of three liter capacity. So in a one time in a two to uh, one day we can make at least hundred to two hundred gram of uh, hollow sphere using this facility. Of course, we have to mix uh, because industry required component uh, for this kind of uh, material. So we are looking for industry and the demonstrate the component. we are interacting with the defense uh, industry to make uh, the panels and the armor plates uh, using this uh, foam and uh, of course uh, we have a good collaboration with the uh, universities and the colleges and also the industry so we will do make uh, this happen and these are the all the papers which is in the foam area as well as syntactic foam thank you sir thank you very much i think that's a great introduction from everybody and uh, you know each of you said something that i really wanted to expand upon uh, i think i'll start with thomas first 
you said about your interest in industrial applications and uh, moving the the lab technology to industry uh, so i'm interested in the metal matrix syntactic forms and knowing more about what kind of applications you are looking at and are there any real applications of metal matrix syntactic forms that have been successful out there yet <laughs> that's a very good question so let's start with the first part which is really what kind of applications are we looking into and as I've already hinted at in my presentation, the so impacts energy absorption is one of our key areas. And it was also mentioned by Grove in the crash box. Um, I think that's one of the classic kind of uses in there. Um, however, looking into that, we actually came across a problem and that is our forms were actually a little bit too strong. So we spent a lot of time trying to make our forms weaker. So they actually were compatible with a relatively light passenger vehicle. Um, I guess, there's definitely a point to be made with impact absorption. However, we also have been exploring more and more other applications. Um, one of them we tried quite recently is stamping using metallic forms. We spent a good year trying to run a test and then we figured out that our machines aren't good enough. So if there's anybody out there who can do damping measurements, please let me know. Um, other things, and then I guess technically it's no longer a syntactic forms. So with quite a few of our materials, we are removing the particles after manufacturing, which gives us an open porosity. And by doing that, we have now a accessible interconnected porosity, and we're using that for compact heat exchangers. Then a very interesting application I can't talk too much about is using it in fuel cells um, and also in biomaterials, which we have been doing for a while. Now, your second question, and I think it's a very good one, um, what successful applications are out there? And quite frankly, I'm not really aware of many of them. It was, again, hinted at in the introductions in here that some of the work is happening in defense, where you do have blast protection, maybe deep sea technology. But obviously, because it is defense research, it's not really out in the public domain. So it's very difficult to, to say what are successful large scale applications. We're definitely working on improving that, but at the moment, I'm not aware of too many examples. Okay, Gaurav, would you like to pick up on that? Because you've been working with blast protection and more DoD type applications. Uh, so already okay. we have making current. Uh, currently, we are making one one fit by one fit sandwich panel for blast resistance, and we are already doing testing in one of the ordnance factory. Uh, we in the one maybe within fifteen days or twenty days, we have to test our sandwich panel for uh, one kg of TNT uh, in, the, in their facility and actually the application is to make the eight uh, make the panel for the their vehicle the vehicle which is going in the uh, in the in the uh, area where uh, TNT or uh, some kind of explosives are there and uh, soon we have a, we got a project from CSR to make one fit by one fit of the sandwich panel using metallic foam and we are using uh, the face sheet as uh, as metal uh, carbon fiber composite so at least uh, okay. they, have, they should have some more strength and uh, and the and the requirement of the uh, panel is to three meter by three meter because most of the vehicles in the defense they are they big size vehicles so, so we are making a uh, in this project we will make a one meter by one meter panel and then join by the some adhesive bonding this is the so, approach and we, we are already so, doing the simulation yeah. of this the same and we've tested that uh, using foam, we can reduce the displacement of the uh, whatever the body is there. You can reduce the displacement also, and 90% we can uh, absorb the energy. So these are metal syntactic foam panels, one foot Both by are, one we foot. Have, we have, is, okay. They are conventional metal foam, and we are also adding sinusphere into that. Okay, that's interesting. So do you have and these the large future, scale? In the future, we will add a hollow sphere in, in that also. Okay. Do you have these large scale casting facilities for yes, three by three meter? No, no. Okay. Actually, we have a facility of making a 500 mm by 500 mm. Okay. So by, for, for making one meter, one meter, we have to join by some kind join of them. joining technique. Yeah. Okay. So I want to continue with you a little bit because you mentioned a lot of different applications, including uh, battery applications and EMI shielding and other things. So how big is the group that's looking into a whole bunch yeah. of these uh, things? Yeah, we have a four, uh, four scientists in our laboratory and we have Inspire one Inspire fellow also mm -hmm. who is working, daddy working on carbon foam. And we have a three, four PhD student who are working on that. And we have a very good powder metallurgy facility. We have a big uh, casting bay where we can ca 
make 60 kg of composite at one go and when the same composite is used for making foam for making a, and we have currently earlier we are making batch process of making foam for one by one in a one day we can only make two or three batches of the panel like yeah. uh, 500 or 500 now we have a big uh, facility where continuously we can feed the liquid metal into the some uh, furnace con the tunnel furnace and uh, uh, from one end we are putting the liquid metal uh, from the one end and another end we are getting the foam so in a day oh, we can okay. make 300 kg of foam in a one day that's wonderful thank you uh Mathinja, i had the next question for you because you have a lot of experience with industrial scale processing of polymer matrix composites yeah. uh, so along the same lines uh, what is your experience in working with industrial scale manufacturing of syntactic foams what are the challenges when people are doing this large scale fabrication compared to the lab scale fabrication the quality wise the the properties that you get in those composites uh, so would you like to comment on that yeah uh, so basically uh, industrial scale uh, manufacturing when we talk about compared to lab scale uh, manufacturing uh, two parameters uh, primarily come in picture one is the cost and second is uh, the volume so uh, when we uh, talk about uh, the volume then we need to uh, switch over to uh, the machines uh, with the industrial scale settings for an example uh, in injection molding wherein we started or explored this in 2016, uh, the, the uh, pressure settings for getting one uh, uh, component molded out there is uh, somewhere around three megapascal. And uh, me, that, that is the minimum one. So uh, now the, this becomes a critical factor because at this three megapascal, when we do injection molding, what would be the particle survival rate number one Second, there is a, a, a screw rotating inside which blends everything within a very narrow clearance. So again, here, uh, these things uh, are very crucial in uh, estimating the survival of the particle and appropriately choosing the particle. And when we choose uh, a higher crushing strength particle, then what is that outside diameter, which uh, again is one more parameter wherein uh, if I take an example of just injection molding, which passes through different clearances between the screw and the barrel and then the nozzle, and then again it goes into the mold cavity. So the uh, particle size, crushing strength, and then the industrial scale uh, uh, settings of pressure, temperature, these becomes very crucial uh, in making the quality components. And the similar uh, is true. Uh, now this was talking about the volume side. And when we talk about the scale side, now we have 3D printers available of any scale for that matter. So uh, here in India, there is a company which has uh, developed a printer for printing around uh, six foot by five foot by let us say five foot. So that large scale uh, printing again, when we go, uh, so again, there are again parameters like uh, particle survival rate, the deposition, the defect scripting in picture, uh, so these are really a challenges. Uh, the cost is the parameter because we talk about volume. And we, when we talk about cost, then uh, the product which we want to develop uh, need to be cheaper than the matrix. And then the particles should be cheaper than that. And ultimately, the processing cost uh, on volume scale need to be justified uh, with reference to these uh, constituent materials. Uh, so okay. that's how the challenges creep in. Okay. So um, maybe I can just stay with you to start the next question because I wanted to understand a little bit about uh, uh, who's funding this kind of work in India and Australia. Is it mostly the government agencies or is it also grants from companies or collaborative work with companies or national labs? How is the ecosystem working there? So in India, uh, Department of Science and Technology, then DRDO, uh, Defense Research Development Organization, then Aeronautical Research Development Board. Uh, these are the funding agencies which uh, funds uh, about uh, uh, these lightweight materials. In addition to this, there are companies uh, or consortium of companies with some specific focus. So a recent grant which I uh, received is from a consortium of a company who are working in uh, refrigeration, refrigeration and air conditioning system. So they want us to develop uh, insulating foam with uh, uh, um, 
much lower thermal conductivity so there are a consortium of companies also which we fund uh, which from which we uh, get the funding and there are national labs as well okay gaurav would you like to add something you are from a government research lab okay so we are also in the similar way what jad dodani sir has said that we are also getting the fund from uh, drdo and ardb board and other agencies of course from the industry side it is very less because uh, we are talking with many industry like uh, all the automobile industry they have taken the form for uh, from us and they are just initially they are testing the form for the crash energy but still they are not come up with the uh, some technology transfer or something like that so that they can use in the in fact car manufacturing they are still using the conventional made the airbag is for protection from the passenger not the they are only doing the passive may protection for the passenger but not the structure protection still they are using conventional uh, crash box and other thing but still they have not come with the uh, using the foam for the crash box application okay uh, thomas how how are things in australia who's funding syntactic foam research there thanks in australia tough <laughs> so <laughs> I guess the the main funding source from the government is the ARC, which is the Australian Research Council. Um, they write out government projects, which are very interesting but hard to get. Um, looking at industry, I found it quite difficult to find industrial partners. Maybe it's a bit because in Australia there isn't such a strong manufacturing technology. But I think there's also often expectation that you develop a product as opposed to developing a material, and that just makes it a little bit harder because you really need to have this final product that you can pitch the industry to get their attention. Okay. Do you have a focus on startup companies which are always looking for new materials, new ideas, or something to commercialize? We did look into that. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of ongoing. I can't say too much about it, but it's a okay. very difficult pathway, quite frankly. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So, uh, how is modeling and simulation actually driving the research now? Uh, in your case, in your group, uh, do you do modeling or simulation mostly to support the experimental data, or is it the other way around that you do experiments to support your theories? Uh, still for me? Yeah. Start with you. <laughs> okay. Sure. No worries. Um, so modeling and simulation, it's quite interesting. Obviously, historically, we started off with doing exclusively modeling and simulation. And we have then really used that information that we have gained to improve better materials. I guess another way to use that is simply to have a shortcut. So I like to do parametric studies, looking at variations of certain form parameters, be it the particles, be it the porosity. Um, and basically using numerical simulation, I can shortcut how many samples I have to manufacture in the end. Another thing which we haven't been doing too much, but will be very interesting for the future, is also on a much higher level to use effective foam properties, and then to look how can we actually integrate metallic foams into more complex machines or structures? What are the interactions? So one of the example I talked about damping earlier, what does a damping element do to the structure? First of all, how does it absorb energy? And second, how may it shift the resonance frequency of the structure? Okay. Agora, would you like to say anything? Yeah. yeah. In our lab, we have a very good group of simulation. Uh, they have, we have we have very good software like uh, LS Dyna, Abacus, and other thing. So uh, other group uh, which uh, they are supporting us for the simulation part. So as I have told you that what are the uh, simulation we have done for the car crash box? The similar uh, experiment we have conducted in the ARI Pune, uh, and the result are more or less same thing that we have uh, seen that some uh, some two kg of foam in the crash box can. Uh, absorb the 60 kg, um, 60 meter per kilometer per hour uh, speed at a thousand and thousand kg of uh, car weight. They are tested, and all the we are whatever the foam we are making, uh, liquid metal dilute, we are doing it a CT scan, and then the same CT scan data can be put into the software, and then we yeah. can simulate the the data uh, in the terms of uh, this uh, performance and other thing. And uh, we can also generate our own uh, foam, uh, foam structure using the software. And we can test this thing. And we are also making the foam structure by some kind of 3D modeling software. Uh, and we are also making it by 3D. But we have a good, very good 3D printing facility for polymer, not for the metal. So we are making the same 3D print uh, structure by polymer 3D printing, uh, open cell foam. And we are also doing it simulation. And uh, 
the blast also we have carried on using the ls dyna that the same uh, whatever the blast energy we are simulating and we are testing that how much is the velocity reduction how much the acceleration is reduced how much the displacement we have already carried out all the simulation and then we have made the foam and we are now going to test in the ordnance factory okay so all the, the uh, integral part of the, our work in simulation is all, already there okay and how about your case mrithunjay how is your lab dealing with modeling simulation and experiments no, you are on mute you need to unmute oh sorry yes uh, so uh, we deal with uh, fundamentally on uh, experimental side uh, so uh, uh, in using different methods to uh, process this forms and uh, do the experimental side uh, modeling side we have not yet ventured in okay so uh, i would like to take a question from attendee so thomas this question came for you that how can we increase the bonding between matrix and reinforcement and uh, do you have any plans of 3d printing your foams at some point okay so i guess with the bonding between the matrix and the particles i guess we have been somewhat lucky that our material systems always gave us a good interface um, we are also looking often at foams where the function of the particle is primarily just to introduce porosity and not to add strength to the material um, However, we did have some problems with wetting, and I guess surface coating of the particles itself would be a good way to approach that. But we didn't really have to pursue that in detail yet. Um, sorry, that was the second part of the question. Do you plan to 3D print your syntactic forms? Any considerations? Uh, uh, 3D printing, okay, that's kind of the, the opposite philosophy of what we have. We want to make our foams as cheap as possible, and using 3D printing is amazing. It gives you versatility with geometry, it allows amazing things, but it also will increase the cost. Another problem that we have is we use foams with relatively large particles. So our minimum particle size, I believe, has been about half a millimeter in diameter, which in my understanding isn't really compatible with the 3D printing technologies that normally use much smaller particles. Um, so I, I believe it is interesting, but we are currently not considering any 3D, uh, 3D printing. Okay, all right. Another question is uh, for Gaurav. It says that about titanium matrix syntactic forms. So are you looking into the bio implant application of these titanium yes. matrix syntactic forms and yes, what are yes, the sir. plans for that? Yes, sir. We have uh, initially we have made a simple titanium form without any hollow sphere. And we have also uh, added the sinosphere into uh, titanium form. We have done, done it in vitro and vivo test and also we have conducted. So uh, currently uh, earlier we have had sinosphere into the uh, titanium form, but sinosphere is not the bioactive. So now the plan is to add HEP or magnesium or bioactive glass into the uh, titanium form. So when it will put into the body, this part can dissolve and make the connect connective tissues, uh, connectivity within the foam. Uh, any, for adding these things to increase the plateau strength of the material, also the young modelers. So that actually normal titanium form has a lower, of course it has a similar young modelers as to the bone, but it has a lower strength compared to the bone. So that's why we have to add some ceramic part into that so that strength can increase, but simultaneously it has to dissolve into the body. Mm -hmm. So that we are doing, and we have submitted one project in DBT where we will add this kind of holosphere into the Titan form to make it more functional, okay. making more bioactive. So usually these reinforcing particles are much cheaper than the matrix material. And if you put like 50, 60% particles by volume inside matrix material, Effectively, the raw material cost is very low, but then you are adding the processing cost, you are adding the inventory and procurement cost. So do you have any ideas about why the syntactic foam cost is high, if it is high? Or are there varieties of syntactic foam which are actually lower than the fully dense polymer or metal, uh, which is out there? Like sinosphere is a very low cost. Of yes. The other part, other you know, holosphere are costly because we have to process it. But sinosphere doesn't has it is not perfectly. Sometimes you want has a uniformity in sinosphere particle size as well as some sinosphere break means the shell wall. Normally sinosphere made during the their uh, coal uh, thermal power plant. So basic basically they are made by incipient uh, fusion of the fly ash particle only. So yeah, normally even 3M particles these are glass particles. I think their cost is lower than yes, the sir. matrix material yes, cost. Sir. Yes, sir. And yes, if you are filling 60% of them in the matrix. Uh, shouldn't the product be cheaper? 
that's why if we make uh, this kind of uh, pro if we make the machinery cost effective and the process somehow we can make uh, this particle in one very short time with a high coating rate or something spring rate then of course we can uh, reduce the cost and indeed you know the uh, the manpower cost is very less so we can make this kind of particle in much cheaper rate as compared to us or europe okay mrityanjay have you done any calculations on the cost of these syntactic foams that can they actually be cheaper than the same component made of matrix material because i saw in one of your graphs there were a lot of these injection molded small parts so how do the cost compare with pure polymer versus a syntactic foam part uh, sir um cost uh, now as you mentioned about 3m particles or even uh, as uh, gaurav uh, mentioned uh, about sinospheres now when we use this in uh, uh, industrial scale machine which is uh, going for a voluminous production definitely cost goes down and uh, we have observed that in addition uh, expensive matrix will be saved once we infuse uh, these particles uh, which are cheaper than the matrix and that's what the uh, was the focus of uh, low cost syntactic foam development so uh, when we infuse them about 50 60% the uh, cost goes down uh, about 25% straight away uh, but uh, only issue is that the optimization it takes a, a little time and we have those as i mentioned earlier uh, the Uh, constraint over uh, uh, the particle size which we can use so we have used a maximum up to 50 microns for injection molding based on the clearance available in the uh, in the barrel between screw and the barrel uh, mm -hmm. so with if if uh, we have a better strength particles uh, of much uh, lower diameter and especially which will be driven by the machine specifications through which we are going to get this mass production out then definitely cost goes down Uh, we could have, uh, we have observed about 25% less yes okay and thomas you also said about the cost at one point that cost is a barrier but uh, in some application you said that you have to make the product weaker and weaker which means maybe filling more porosity and more uh, weaker particles in there so shouldn't that become cheaper and cheaper i guess it definitely does so you already mentioned that um particles are relatively inexpensive that's definitely the case and we are replacing expensive metals so in our case mostly casting aluminum um i guess the real question or the real problem is manufacturing right now our samples are lovingly handcrafted by some phd students in a batch method which makes them extremely expensive like they are artists they do an amazing job but it's not compatible with industry Yeah. Um we actually are looking into maybe adapting one of these high volume methods to use them in combination with metallic foams but the problem is that's a major investment and it's also a high risk proposition so it's quite difficult to get funding for this kind of work it is a lot easier for us to try new material systems in the lab with our existing methods than trying to have some kind of large volume method that we have to develop at high cost and high risk So it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem I guess. Right, but what can we do as a researcher to encourage industry to adopt it? I mean this is a question that we are always asking ourselves in the US that so you I have to was... you have to make it uh, a win-win situation for industry where they are getting a better product but also you know at lower cost. Uh, I think it was mentioned a few times I think collaboration is the answer. Mm -hmm. If you really can team up make a large group Um I think the risk for the industry goes down because we can bring more resources to the table and also more expertise but yeah it's, it's definitely a problem because before we have created a big market and demand for syntactic foams be it metallic or polymeric I think metallic is the bigger challenge here I think industry is unlikely to commit much money to it and if we don't have the money it becomes hard for us to make this a cheap and widely available material okay uh have you any of you worked with particles that are not spherical anybody you know well, i have seen examples of particles which are cuboid and weird shapes you know uh, uh pyramids and what not but are there any benefits has anybody ever thought about using them and in research we are always looking for the next big thing next big problem yes sir yeah not for the sino syntactic foam but conventional foam we are using irregular particle as well as the spherical so spherical of course initial 
by the powder metallurgy route if you use spherical particle the initial compaction uh, density the green density were much higher as compared to the irregular particle but but the spherical part as you know the contact points are less so during the sintering they have a, a less coalescence as compared to the irregular particle but of course you can if a regular particle we have found out that uh, we get the more plateau strength as compared to the spherical particle okay sometimes but initial density may be less in density of the spherical particle will be higher than the irregular but uh, but plateau strength wise more because more sintering uh, the is uh, interfacial area are much more in the irregular particle okay uh, anybody else wants to chime in on that so i guess our particles are never perfectly spherical i guess the main thing we have been doing is we have been packing and compressing these particles and thereby changing their shape before we are infiltrating them with a the metal um, the benefit of this approach is we get a better interconnection between pores in our metallic foams um, and it also increases the sorry it increases the porosity and decreases the amount of metal that we actually have to put into the foam but i guess that's the only non spherical thing we have been doing okay and there are several questions which alluded to these uh, uh, i think thomas said it or uh, gorav also said something like that that particles are dissolved in some applications to give you eventually a open cell foam structure uh, so what kind of particles are used there and uh, how are you actually dissolving what applications are you looking at there <laughs> So we are using for the bioactivity at normal titanium is bio inert so it don't it just keep as a, it will make the interfacial bonding with the bone but it won't introduce in, introduce the osteo integration with the bone cell formation it is just remain there so for increasing the bioactivity we have to add bioactive component like magnesium or a hap or something like that. so we can make the same uh, component by holosphere and then can introduce in the titanium form and then uh, after one, maybe some of, some month it can dissolve and make the pore make the structure porous so it will okay. also introduce the osteo integration it will allow yeah. cell to come to the uh, bone uh, foam part and then eventually the foam become the integral part of the bone okay okay so we are using good old sodium chloride which is not our method it's a quite old method i don't remember the group that made it first but i should credit them here and um, that's a very easy method so just taking sodium chloride particles they may be shaped typically the crystals aren't very spherical so i think one of the main challenges is to get spherical sodium chloride particles um, and they can simply be leached out using warm water um, yeah. another particle that we like to use is expanded perlite um that's a very lightweight material it's a volcanic byproduct so again it inexpensive and it's also extremely weak so we just have been using a high pressure water jet to basically wash that out of our structure um that method is maybe not quite as effective so i could imagine that if the foam becomes bigger it will be difficult to remove particles from the core but with smaller samples it has been working extremely well and applications um one of our key interests is at the moment compact heat exchangers we also have been looking into biomaterials so i'm not going to talk about that again it was just mentioned um but in heat exchangers basically utilizing the great thermal conductivity of the metallic matrix and the large surface area to efficiently transfer heat from a fluid to another fluid or wherever we want to get it mm -hmm. so all of you had mentioned functionally graded syntactic forms at some point and i was curious to know more about what your plans are for these functionally graded syntactic foams are they still in the development mode or do you also see certain applications which are guiding your work in this area actually bone are the functionally graded component bone mm -hmm. so we have to mimic the foam uh, foam in the same way that the outer part of the foam should have a lower porosity and and less pore size and the in the middle part where the cancellous bone is there that should be have higher porosity and more pore pore fraction so it is only possible of course by the simple powder metallurgy route it is very difficult to make functional graded foam but by the 3d printing it is possible i think so and we have a we will plan that we, if we have a, some collaboration with, with the metal 3d printer we can make titanium foam functional graded okay it is possible yeah uh presently uh, uh we have we are printing the functionally graded syntactic foam in the polymeric base and uh, the focus is on energy absorption and damping applications one of the doctor student is presently working on that 
Okay. But are these, uh, what is driving this work? What is your end goal? What do you want to achieve in terms of properties or applications with that? Uh, better damping uh, and vibration characteristics and uh, uh, fundamentally because we are uh, in, uh, developing this uh, functionally graded syntactic forms using 3D printing, uh, the uh, final outcome is uh, printing different uh, cellular structures mm -hmm. uh, instead of a solid functionally graded form. Uh, we can have a of a form. Uh, uh, so, um, anticipating better damping than the solid uh, functionally graded systems. Okay. Thank you. Thomas, what are your thoughts on functionally graded ones? So we also started looking into that. Um, for, I think for the impact protection, it's really scaling the response of the material to all phases of the impact, meaning having the right resistance at any time during this very fast process. Um, Another area where we have been looking into functionally graded materials is to basically have more control about the flow through the material itself. Meaning you may want to have larger pores in certain areas to encourage flow. And you may have smaller pores to have a higher flow resistance and maybe be able to redirect flow paths. Okay. So one question I had was about the difference, the way aerospace structures work versus uh, underwater structures work. And syntactic forms have been used in both areas quite extensively. So defects play a pretty significant role in aerospace materials because, you know, it's an internally pressurized tube and everything is expanded out. And uh, underwater vehicles are mostly under compression and defects don't play that much of a role there. Uh, so, uh, how's the work going on in terms of characterization of syntactic forms and, uh, you know, modeling of defects and fractures in in case of uh, metals and also polymers? Uh, Jay, do you want to start with that? In case of uh, polymers, uh, the high strain rate testing is one part wherein. Uh, we can uh, go to that level of uh, blast resistance or um, any other defense applications. Uh, presently, uh, pertaining to blast resistance, we are looking into uh, developing these forms. Okay. Uh, Thomas? I guess that's two areas which is very difficult for me to talk to, aerospace and the subsea. I haven't been working <laughs> either. Um, yeah. I guess talking at defects, so we had a numerical study a while ago where we basically were just looking at the sensitivity of metallic forms to defects. What we did is we conducted a micro CT scan of a structure, simulated it and obtained properties, and then we just added artificial errors into the structure. And as expected, we could find a quite high sensitivity of the foam properties to any kind of defect that we have introduced, which allowed us to quantify the sensitivity that's often talked about. I guess with okay. metal foams, we may be a little bit on the lucky side because the matrix is a bit more ductile than in a polymeric form. Um, but I, I guess the same problems in general will apply, even so maybe it's slightly less crucial by comparison. Okay. Gaurav, have you looked into the defects and characterization yeah. methods? By liquid metallurgy route, it is of, of course the defects are more, but because you are using some kind of gas injection mat uh, material, also you are using playing with the casting temperature and the pouring temperature. So that way, defects are possible in the casting route. But of course, the powder metallurgy route, you are using the, the space holder or, or the hollow sphere perfectly. And so that way, defect may be reduced. And also, we have to, uh, we are using all kind of simulation and the CT scan also to. Uh, check that foam parameter and uh, we are now looking we have some uh, camera also high speed camera and also we are doing the compression we are taking the photograph of the uh, foam while compression also so we can see that how much defect is producing and how much it is uh, compacting during the and we are also measuring the hardness after compaction also and we are measuring it just do, testing it uh, microstructure after deformation so we can see how how the pores can be reduced and how much defect are there so that we are doing all in all kind of material this this kind of approach okay i think we are approaching the end of the hour so if you want to take a minute or two and try to summarize your thoughts 
about where syntactic form field is going and if you have any advice for many students who are log, uh, logged in today on what will be the next big problem in your uh, opinion. That will be really great. Uh, Thomas, you can start with this. Okay, no problem. Um, well, I think this was mentioned a few times before. Um, I think that metallic forms really are at a level where they are mature and they can be used, but there is a distinct and clear lack of industrial application. And I think that the only way to overcome that, and again, this was mentioned before, is to work closely with industry. And I really hope that it's able to build large collaborations out of multiple research groups, which makes it much more interesting for industry to work with us. And I guess if you do have any kind of interesting problem that you believe that may be solved using metallic foams, or maybe you already have an industry partner in mind, um, we would be really excited to be part of such a large collaboration between multiple groups, hopefully international. Thank you. Sounds good. Jay? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, pertaining to polymeric foam, uh, uh, giving uh, or knowing the recent advancements in manufacturing, like 3D printing, probably unmanned aerial, ve aerial vehicles, uh, printing in one go of a smaller scale, uh, like a small submarine, uh, which can be deployed and can be printed at one go with uh, foams, uh, having that particular buoyancy application might be a, a good lead. And as Thomas said about industrial collaborations and industry sponsored uh, things, creeping in and forms would be a good thing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Gaurav. Yeah, in my view also, we have to go for more industrial collaboration and we have to look at that, how we can make the, these firm in property more repeatable and more reproducible. Then only industry may, will find it more ap application in the there. So for that, uh, and also for the cost effective, we have to reduce the cost of uh, this uh, hollow particles uh, in a much better way and should, should be very intact. It should not be like uh, hollow particles should have a pores or defect into that. So we have to make very intact uh, hollow particle as well. The part of the processing we are doing, it should be repeatable, reproducible, and uh, it should be upscale to the industrial scale only. Of course, we are making the best process, maybe one kg, two kg, or five kg, but industrial scale, it requires 1,000 kg, 2,000 kg to one go. So for, we have to check for the industrial scale also, that where it can, it, it can be upscale up or not. And we have to see for the better characterization that uh, how it is uh, very well bonded with the, how it can easily replacing the existing structure in the industry. And that we have to do lots of uh, modeling also, because you are re reducing the weight as well as you are re reducing the property as compared to the stainless steel structure. So we have to check that it's a functional, pro functional aspect of the, also. Thank you very much. So I think that's all the time we had today. And uh, I want to thank all the panelists, uh, all of you. Uh, I've read your paper, so it's great to uh, meet you virtually and, uh, and learn about your work from you. So that was a great experience for me, and I'm sure all the attendees would agree with that. Uh, I want to thank the USAID for providing funding for making these events possible. Uh, Gary Mack, uh, he is the lead student organizer of these events. So thank you for all the work that he is doing here. He has already posted link for the next panel, which is going to be on February 12th. The link is in the chat. You can register for that panel. And we are going to have this panel on uh, research on syntactic forms in Europe. And finally, we are going to have the fourth panel in March, which will be focused on research and industry applications in the US. So we hope to see you uh, in the next panel. And uh, thank you once again to all the panelists for taking time out and talking to us. And uh, almost close to midnight around here, I would like to sign off. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much and good night. <laughs>